Winter limnology is important because it allows lake managers to gain knowledge and a better understanding of a system as a whole throughout the entire year. Lakes are dynamic systems that experience changes daily, seasonally, and annually. Important metrics can be monitored through ice cover, which allows managers to collect data on parameters such as dissolved oxygen, or better known as DO, pH, conductivity, total dissolved solids, and temperature. Ice cover occurs in the northern United States at high elevations due to frigid air temperatures below zero degrees Celsius and can affect the aforementioned water quality parameters. During the winter, dimectic lakes or lakes that experience two mixing events, have temperature profiles that invert. The coldest water is located closest to the surface, and the warmest water is closest to the bottom. During the warm, summer months, the warmest water is located at the surface with the coldest underneath. Typically, as the temperature of the water decreases, density increases, making the cold water sink. However, as the temperature approaches zero degrees Celsius, water begins to change state and it becomes less dense. Cold water holds more oxygen than warm water, which can either have a positive or negative effect depending on the species present within the water body. Oxygen is required for most aquatic organisms' metabolisms and can become limiting at five parts per million. Oxygen profiles show the level of DO throughout the entire depth of the lake and should be monitored for hypoxia and or anoxia. Hypoxic environments have low dissolved oxygen and anoxic environments have no dissolved oxygen. Dissolved oxygen is added to the lake through diffusion across the surface. However, wind cannot create turbulence to add DO under the ice cover. Photosynthetic organisms such as phytoplankton and submerged macrophytes also contribute DO to the water column. But limited sunlight during the winter causes decreased photosynthetic activity and oxygen production. Animals, plants, and bacteria use DO every day through metabolic processes contributing to the loss of oxygen during the winter. Decomposition of organic matter at the bottom of the lake can also deplete oxygen levels, leaving little for maintenance of aquatic life. Having no oxygen can cause fish kills within the water bodies. Hypoxic or anoxic conditions can occur during the warm months. However, ice cover affects DO inputs and makes winter kill more likely. It is important to monitor dissolved oxygen levels year-round. Trophic status can affect the DO distribution throughout the water column. Oligotrophic systems have low levels of productivity, or algae and plant growth, and low amounts of nutrients in the water. The water often has a blue color. As a result of low production, oxygen is rarely depleted in the winter. Eutrophic systems are the opposite and have high levels of productivity and high nutrient concentrations. The water may be greenish in color. Eutrophic ice-covered lakes can develop winter stratification of dissolved oxygen. While the excessive amount of macrophytes as well as phytoplankton found in eutrophic lakes may still be photosynthesizing during the ice-covered months, decomposition is still occurring at the lake's bottom. As organic matter decomposes, it can muse up most, if not all, of the oxygen at the bottom. Ice-covered lakes do not allow mixing to occur from wind, and snowpack may halt photosynthesis of plants and plankton because of the lack of sunlight penetration. Conducting research during winter months can be an effective way of utilizing field techniques that are less feasible without ice cover. Some of these techniques could be pond or lake mapping, muck depths, winter kill surveys, ice fishery surveys, and water quality transects. For example, water quality transects were conducted on a small mesotrophic lake located in upstate New York. Due to the harsh winter months experienced in this area, winter fish kills often occur. Fish kills occur when oxygen levels dip below 5 ppm, carbon dioxide and ammonia concentrations increase, or pH decreases. A powered ice auger was used to drill eight holes 200 feet away from each other along the maximum length of the water body. Water was sampled through the ice for hydrogen sulfide, alkalinity, hardness, and ammonia concentrations. Oxygen, pH, temperature, conductivity, and total dissolved solids 
or TDS, were also recorded at 2 foot increments. It was found that levels of dissolved oxygen fell below 5 parts per million after 2 meters of depth. This meant that in a pond with a max depth of 5 meters, 3 meters were hypoxic and this area was therefore inhabitable for most fish. This shallow pond would not support a healthy fish community in that limited space and was most likely on its way to winter kill. Safety should always be your number one concern. Winter sampling should always be conducted in pairs. Wherever it is possible, you should follow routes over the ice that have been taken by others. Sampling should only occur on ice that is four or more inches thick. PFDs, float coats, or immersion suits should always be worn. It is important to remember to bring a spud bar and hand auger to test the ice as you walk out. Ice can change thicknesses as it thaws and freezes throughout the winter. Boots, tracks, and snowshoes and correct winter attire should be worn while out on a lake or pond. Remember to always use your best judgment when sampling on ice. Make sure to tell a friend or family member when and where you're going, and most importantly, tell them when you plan to return. Winter sampling is an important part of understanding a water body as a whole, and is an opportunity to collect vital data to better manage lakes, ponds, and reservoirs.